Kellen Mond is a guy that uh, gained that starting position at quarterback at Texas A&M early enough in his career and stuck around for four years to pretty much compile statistics that place him on the top of uh, just about every meaningful Aggie passing statistic, but much maligned throughout his career as being pretty inconsistent, has the big arm, athletic, uh, can move around, played in a ton of big games, but uh, gained a level of stability and consistency this year that really helped him in the draft. He gets uh, selected at 66th. I was not surprised the Vikings went with the developmental quarterback. They were all in trying to get Justin Fields from the way it sounds. I mean, they were aggressive trying to move up, did not want to give up the compensation that was needed to do it, but also felt strongly about Kellen Mond and what he was going to bring to the table. So seeing what Kellen Mond can do, I mean, you watch him and you go, okay, inconsistent play. Accuracy, though, improved uh, slowly statistically over the course of the four years. But you still saw moments where, you know, footwork wasn't as good and, and he, you know, short arms a throw or is off balance. He needs to work on those mechanics. The first thing I would do is just hire a personal movement coach just to refine and make his mechanics more efficient because the guy has the athletic ability. He's got a big arm. Jimbo Fisher's raved about the smarts that he has. All the package points are there for him to be a successful quarterback. You see the flashes like watching him at the Senior Bowl makes that one nice tight window throw, and then you coming back with some off-balance, threading-the-needle throw where you're going, hey, man, like what, what was that mechanics-wise? So you brought it up perfect with the words inconsistent. I would say that same thing happened over the course of his college career, but with the athleticism and all the tools that he has and improving over the course of time, especially when Jimbo Fisher got there, I don't even think, you know, he didn't throw the ball downfield as much. He had low rates throwing the ball 20 plus yards downfield. So will he fit better in a play action heavy system where he masters the footwork and the technique of that system and then refines those mechanics? It's worth throwing a dart, especially with Kirk Cousins having just two years left on his contract. Yeah, I think he's got a, he's got a, he's got room to grow as like just consistency, but the interesting part about that is um his completion percentage did go up every year that he was the starter, um, which was kind of a narrative that, you know, to that to that point about him, you know, he was an inconsistent starter. Well, his, his completion percentage went up. Um, he got better as he went. Now I think it's, it's just a question of does he continue kind of that upper trajectory? And uh, he took care of the ball the better last year and made better decisions. Um, but one point that – I thought was interesting that came up during the draft process was just the offense that he comes from and just how much Jimbo Fisher requires you to do and how that could help him with his transition to the NFL. Um, that's going to be something interesting to follow. I think he's heading to a great situation in Minnesota. Um, but yeah, I think he's just got to become more consistent, become more accurate, especially with his downfield throws. That's, that's one area he can probably still make strides, but um, I think it's a great fit in Minnesota with Kirk Cousins and, and the and that coaching staff. 